there folks, Gareth here, and this is the Venturer Elite Win S11KT. This is a rather affordable 2-in-1 mini Windows notebook that has both a tablet and a sort of keyboardy type of affair that somehow clicks onto it. It uh, retails for about $109.99 and uh, takes a micro SD card. That's uh, about 64 gigabytes in size. There's one included here. Uh, it has Windows 10 plus the Office 365 tester for a month. It's got HDMI, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. So there's nothing around the bottom here and nothing on the side. This side is also blank. And on the back we have some kids. Kids playing with it. And oh, it's the gunmetal version, which would make it look beautiful, I'm sure. On the back here we have an 11.6 inch screen with IPS technology built in, 2 gigabytes of RAM, which does seem a little low for some Windows 10 devices. It's a bit of a pain. In, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, 32 gigabytes of storage and that 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Okay, so down the bottom here it says that there is an Intel Atom processor with 2 gigabytes of RAM, um, which is mentioned above. Uh, 1366 by 768 IPS display, dual cameras, built in Wi Fi. That's a bit of an odd resolution, actually, come to think of it, I think, for the IPS display, but then it's a bit of a, an odd shape. I think it's more designed to read magazines and newspapers. Over this side, we have a micro SD card slot, a mini HDMI output, uh, which is very handy, a micro USB port for charging, and up to eight hours battery life. Yeah, that's nice. So we have uh, the Office 365 reiterated here along with a few other bits and pieces. And they have a YouTube channel with one video on it. So there's various pictures of the device here which are in the promotional materials as well. It looks all very nice. Um, foldable, tentable, and uh, with, with a big colourful screen. So let's dig into it and see what's inside. Okay, so digging in, we have important safety instructions greeting us on the top. I'm sure there's something in here for everyone to read. Getting to know your laptop, basic operations, uh, how to operate Windows 10, which for some people might be a difficult chore. It's a wee bit different, I suppose, to Windows 95. Uh, powering off your laptop and legal safety instructions, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, you'll never read that again, I'm sure. And let's have a look in this cardboard box here, which we have a micro SD card, 64 gigabytes as advertised on the front. Not branded or anything, just uh, very standard. Inside this rather attractive little, I don't know if that's Hessian bag, is the AC adapter with a proprietary connection or at least a not an easy connection to replicate, I, I'm not sure, maybe those multi-units have them. Uh, there's the output and things for those who... 5 volt, 2500 milliamp hours, I believe that is. And then the device itself. Secured in here by foamy bits. One can't really tell by the packaging, uh, however, it does seem to feel a little more quality than some of the cheap laptops that you would expect for uh, 200 pounds. But uh, that could all go pear shaped now, as we. Yeah, it's it's not a bad looking device, to be honest. It's kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say this is gun metal, um, it's a little bit lighter. But uh, yeah, it's a little utilitarian, if anything. Uh, there's some exposed ports and things, and uh, some of the design flourishes feel more unfinished, if anything. But it actually looks a bit charming with these exposed screws and things there. They, they do add a, a, a nice novel look to uh, to things where we're so used to having things beautifully laid out by Apple or whatever. That this actually has its own unique look in that it it's a wee bit retro back to the 90s. Exposed speaker grills and things don't really happen that easily. And even a button on the top like this, which I'm imagining is the volume rocker, is a little bit peculiar. The micro... USB and camera are available right here on the front uh, and well, that's a Venture logo and an exposed speaker. I really like that speaker grill. I'll be interested to see how it sounds 
because technically it's on the back. Okay, on the uh, on the side here we have well then a, an exposed screw. Um, it's there's a couple of them around the device. I'm guessing then uh, it's quite deceptive. I actually thought this was, was um, maybe the AC adapter hole because it does seem to be about the right size for for that connecting uh, bit at the end of the AC adapter, but. Obviously it's not that, but uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to make that mistake. We have a serial number over here, HDMI, the CE code, and some information about Made in China. Then, of course, the, the power uh, instructions as well, which is a wee bit deceptive beside a hole that's the same size as the, the AC adapter. But, well, you know, I suppose they've got to print it somewhere, don't they? Around the front there's nothing along here, but on this side everything is happening. So we have yet another screw. There's a, a Windows button there. That's a bit odd, but no, a Windows button. Uh, the USB, a power button, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, I'm guessing, micro USB, uh, another screw, and then that's more than likely the, the power adapter. Uh, that looks like the power adapter, but that's the power adapter. There's a lot of deceptive power adapter slots on this. Mini HDMI and a microphone hole. All right, so it's it's got everything going for it around the sides, that's for sure. Uh, on the back, there's nothing, uh, and then there's this big hinge. Uh, it's it's quite big and not bulky, but uh, it's it looks like it's fairly hefty and well constructed. And we've got some rubber feet here to protect the de the the table that you have it on when you have it open, and some more exposed screws. Uh, and then that, there's rubber feet here and uh, various screw holes so we have four feet in total and 20 odd screw holes having a look inside we get a couple of free bits of paper protector for the screen and the keyboard itself is kind of big there's a bit of wobble to the screen here just as I move that ever so slightly it's we have everyone's favorite chiclet style keys um, and there's some, some good travel between them as well they're they're quite well spaced out and they're fairly decently sized as well the keyboard is actually quite narrow this way but uh, quite long the other way which allows them to get in almost full a full-size laptop keyboard on such a small device. I mean, if you have a look at these cursor keys, they are there's enough space around them to be using them. I mean, here we have a similar uh, idea. This is the Acer Switch 10, one of the most popular versions of this kind of uh, combination. It has a tiny keyboard by comparison. You can see the cutbacks that have been made in order to get all of the keys onto the small surface area. Um, these F keys are quite small, especially in comparison to the ones that we have over here. And it's, uh, whilst it's not uncomfortable to type on the Acer, uh, this is going to be an awful lot better. I mean, have a look at the shift buttons. Okay, so obviously we need to have a look at the connection here between the keyboard and the, the screen, because there is a bit of a wobble to it, and I need to check that I've put it in correctly. Uh, so it just slots into what appears to be a well-constructed uh, basic hinge but there's these two little ridges that hold it in position. I think that's got to be about it. There's a bit of um, felt at either end here, um, and then these two ridges and some pogo plugs, and that's that's about it. That's, that's what holds it in place. There's a little bit of extra rubber along here to stop from rubbing against the actual keyboard, uh, and and that's that. The, the bottom of the, the tablet has the two holes for those ridges, and then the pogo plug connectors. That's your lot. So for such a big hinge, it, it really it only has those two little bits of pla two plastic nubs that stick up uh, to hold it in place. There is a magnet in effect here as well that uh, helps you line it up and pull it in easier, but there's still a lot of wobble on that screen, which is a bit of a shame. So I guess we'll have to turn it on and have a look and see how it runs, if it takes long enough for it to boot up or what have you. Uh, we get the Venturer logo to start, and we'll just speed up through the logon system.
So first start up there took 30 seconds to get to the hello there screen. And uh, we'll just utilize the touch screen here to move forward. Okay, so that took about eight minutes to get into uh, Windows, get it all set up. And one thing I did notice that it was only looking for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks, which is a bit of a shame. It doesn't cover the five gigahertz spectrum. Uh, and there, but there wasn't too much waiting around. It uh, it was fairly speedy. It's Windows 10 is quite efficient at getting itself up and running. And on this Atom core processor, uh, it's it's not too bad. It could be a lot worse, I would imagine. So uh, Windows looks quite nice on here. It's uh, quite a decent resolution. We unplug this and we get the option for do you want to switch to tablet mode, which we do. And that was a fairly seamless transition. I'm sure some people will say mine's faster, but you know it's it's not too bad. You can see that the pixel density is is quite quite high. There are some some tiny little bits of hard edges and things. You can just about see uh, where that O is on one note. There's uh, quite a few little jaggies around that but that's when you go quite close you wouldn't notice it on the naked eye whenever you're you're just using it the resolution and screen clarity do seem to be quite good using it as a tablet it's actually kind of light it's not as heavy as i thought most of the weight must be in the keyboard there however landscape to portrait orientation it seems to be taking quite a considerable amount of time to switch but then again I've just turned this on so Windows 10 is still setting up and note that uh, there's quite a bit of heat coming off the back of it here that must be where the processor is underneath uh, we can I can really feel that um, as uh, Windows 10 does its thing you know you're not going to get good performance out of Windows 10 after you do the initial setup uh, up for maybe a week about five minutes or so because it's still installing stuff in the background from the ROM. Uh, the the touchscreen does seem to be quite responsive when used, which is a uh, always a good thing. You, you sometimes wonder with these cheap ta tablets. In years gone by, when they had resistive screens and things like that, we saw very, that didn't deliver whenever you uh, you actually touched on the touchscreen because they were woefully underpowered. This does seem to be powerful enough for Windows 10. So having a quick look at the camera here, uh, we're going to take some pictures of, uh, of my knife. Initially on screen it looks quite grainy, but uh, I wonder how that transitions to the actual picture itself. Okay, so that's two done in quick succession, so we'll have a quick look at them. Rather than putting them in the video review, we'll have a look at them on the screen here. That might be a nice idea. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bit fuzzy, and the there's two different color temperatures on it. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's it's mainly probably just a, a camera for business cards and that sort of thing. As you're out, it'll be able to pick that sort of thing up very well. But I wouldn't go taking pictures of your family on it. And uh, we'll we'll have a quick look at the specifications that it says inside to see whether or not my uh, promotional material here is correct. Because it says 1.8 gigahertz processor inside. Whereas something else says 1.3. So there we have 1.3 gigahertz. So perhaps there is another variant of this laptop on the market as well uh, that has the 1.8. This just doesn't have it. It's got 2 gigabytes of RAM, as I said, and it's the 32 bit version on an x64 based processor. So that's a quick hands on with the Venturer Elite Win S 2 in 1 mini Windows notebook. And it's not it's not a horrible experience by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually quite a decent device for for two hundred pounds. I can see a lot of uh, companies probably picking these up to be able to do you know, surveys door to door or whatever, um, or or civil service possibly using this sort of thing for uh, giving out to their ground officers who are doing stuff out there with the people. It's cheap enough to not worry about too much if you were to break it. It's well constructed enough that it'll probably not break too easily. And uh, it's it's not the price of an iPad or anything like that. It's it's a fairly decent little uh, two-in-one mini notebook. 
But the review will be up on the site in the next couple of weeks, and I'll update the notes below to show the website address once it's up and done. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care now. <laughs>